6,690 pounds. A personal favorite, the Whitehawk 26RK here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan. I think this is an absolutely stellar couples camper. Fills well within the size of uh, half ton towability for both weight and length reasons. And just a really smart complement of features. Like it's shorter, but still has a super slide. It's about as small as you can get something that while still keeping a full super slide. I like the Norco chassis that these ride on. The industry's best warranty never hurts. Great rear kitchen and outside kitchen. It just, it just does all the things really well for couples camping. First look here with the slide closed. Behind the slide right here is the refrigerator. So unfortunately we are going to lose access to that in transit. And although that is a major component to lose, the good news is that is the only thing you're losing out on in transit because you can easily navigate through the rest of the RV. So with this one, you gotta kinda plan how you're going to travel. If you do need to make a travel stop and get a drink, remember that you have an outside fridge. Now the outside fridge is 110 only, but if you pack it with like an ice bag or something like that, you can keep some cold drinks or um, anything like that on hand uh, for travel. But otherwise, you can get through here pretty darn nicely. And as you may have noticed, the modern farmhouse decor has made its way here into the Jayco Whitehawk series. Um, a lot of people have been asking for it. It's probably the single most frequent re uh, request I ever heard on any Whitehawk is, can I get that Eagle farmhouse decor in it? And now it's just the Jayco farmhouse decor. It's available in just about everything they offer. Um, alternatively, if this is not your, your jam, you see the darker wood tones there on the dinette or that we saw in the entertainment center. They make a version of this uh, camper with that wood tone basically used through the whole thing, which they call Cashmere Cottage, which also looks good. We're probably going to have a little bit of both here at Halid RV, but I'd always like to know which one's kind of your preference here. The good news is that other than just looks, the equipment doesn't change. Um, the cottage thing is just the color package. Like, you still get these big breeze through windows, the slide side windows all open for airflow. Notice how they're all fully framed out. It gives those nightshades a little something better to bite into. The uh, table here, uh, what's nice, this can of course fold down into a sleeper. We'll see a sneak peek of that in a few minutes. But I love the little bench end accent lights and then the easy storage access that you have down below here. And storage is something that rear kitchens typically do well. And wouldn't you know it, we're looking at a rear kitchen camper that does a very good job of giving us a very good rear kitchen, <laughs> appropriately enough. Starting up top here, uh, not part of the storage so much, but just the skylight and the fact that we have that open feeling vaulted ceiling here. It's another thing that in conjunction with the lighter tones here on the farmhouse decor, make the camper look and feel larger. It's very nice one-two punch here. Um, the uh, cabinetry is all pocket screwed with hardwood cabinet door frames, if you don't know what that means. This kitchen's all the way on the back of the camper. It's going to get the most violent bouncing possible in transit, so it's built with the same kind of cabinetry you find in a full-time warranted Jayco North Point. Um, you know, pretty cool. This stuff's going to hold up. Notice it is counter to cabinet, full wall and side splash right there. And you got those dual uh, breeze windows. That's something that Jayco's always been really known for. Actually, if you talk to people who've been in the industry a while, whenever you see a rear kitchen with double windows, it's always called the Jayco kitchen because they were they they had done this a long time before everybody else. It's largely been assimilated since, but old dogs of the business kind of use that phrase still. Sealed edge countertops throughout the camper, not just here in the kitchen, but the dining table and the uh, big like d d buffet area that we're gonna see in just a second. And you've got a recessed stainless sink with both, uh, you know, conventional cover as well as that rollaway drying rack there and the pop-up power tower for our appliances. They've expanded the storage down here below the sink a little bit. Previously, there was a top shelf only. They've added that little bottom pocket, but there is still a little protection shield there because there's some mechanical type systems things behind that uh, little shield. Now, as we swing over here toward the entertainment center, you see that in a sense, the kitchen storage kind of isn't done because in a way you've got these dual pantries. Um, and that's one of the things sometimes people look at just the back wall of the camper and go, where's the pantry? Well, it's kind of split, but since the shelves are removable, you can sort of do whatever you want with it. And then once again down here, we have that huge sort of uh, buffet serving station. So this thing has uh, an incredible amount of counter space. One of the things I like here, and it's one of the reasons I like putting our videos together instead of just a couple still photos, is if you look at this, if you get up close, you see it's actually intentionally cut 
with a little bit of shape, a couple little knobs, so that it ties right in with the concept of the wood tone pattern on top of that sealed countertop. And it really gives it a neat kind of, I don't know, country cabin, well, I guess the word farmhouse would be appropriate, farmhouse sort of look and feel, doesn't it? Down below, electric space heating fireplace with a little bitty shoe garage there, and just some extra storage pockets like below the uh, entertainment center and whatnot kind of finish all that off. Uh, one of the things that we'll do on pretty much every Whitehawk is outfit them with a larger 15,000 BTU air conditioner to really maximize your cooling power. And kind of along with that, another option that you have the ability to add to a Whitehawk that you see that we're doing here is upgrading to a uh, bigger like max air vent fan right there to really help that cross breeze and whole house airflow. Those things are good for more than just bathrooms, which I think a lot of people think about them in relation to bathrooms, but you can use them all over the place. Now, below the slide, there's actually a radiant barrier, that heat reflective foil stuff that people go so crazy over. Jayco's been doing that in their floors since like 2012, in their, in their slide floors, that is. Uh, theater seat is an optional piece of equipment we have added to this one, and it's directly across from that, you might have noticed, huge TV. So we've got that sweet no-necker, uh, nope, nope, no-neck wrecker entertainment center. I was out for a couple days and I'm getting back into the swing of things, so pardon me here as I muddle my way through the first one or two, which would be today. Um, the mirror there is also really intelligently placed on what would otherwise be a blank wall, and it really kind of fills everything up. Now, uh, if we take a look, you can see how those window shades draw down to really black everything out. But even though it's not a hide -a bed the theater seat can still sort of function as a bit of a sleeper. I think if you're going to be uh, using guest sleeping, though, the dinette over here is probably going to be your major location for things like that. But little kids will sleep in those theater seats just fine. Um, they don't lie flat, but they lie flat enough. Also, uh, it does have heat and massage in that, as well as uh, LED lighting underneath, kind of like you're seeing the lighting under the dinette here, but you need more than just battery power that I'm using. You need actual 110 park or shore power to be able to activate uh, those lights over there. Now, real quick, I also wanted to give us a good look at that entertainment center closed up uh, because those smoky glass inserts on those doors, they look good and they help reflect more light around in here. They're not mirrors per se, but obviously they have a, a good mirrored surface on them. And it really helps this camper, <clears throat> pardon my umbrella down there, by the way, a little bit of a cold rainy day here at Halid RV, helps the whole camper look and feel a little more alive. You know, there's a little bit more movement uh, everywhere that you look. And I mean, again, just the amount of serving space that you have here is absolutely phenomenal. And by the way, I didn't mention this previously, but there are some outlets up here. It's hard to see, they're dark on dark, and that's a big question. I mean, when you see a big chunk of counter space like this, you're gonna be like, whoa, could I plug this in? Could I use this like a desk? What could I do with it? And the short answer is yes, yes you can. Um, coming through here to the walkthrough middle bath, we start with more of that sealed edge countertop type stuff. And no matter what decor, whether it's uh, the RV is outfitted in uh, uh, Cashmere Cottage is the name of it, or the modern farmhouse that we're looking at today, you'll always get a farmhouse bathroom and a cashmere bedroom. They always do it that way. I think because the idea is, uh, you know, typically like a decor in your house is not exactly the same in the bedroom and bathroom as it is the rest of the, uh, the home. So um, you've got more mirror doors here and I'll spare you the look at, at, at me as much as I can help it today. Um, but awesome linen space in here. I mean, this is this is big, this is deep, this is the same pocket screw cabinetry that you find in the kitchen. Tons of storage space there. And then this little corner here. Instead of leaving it open, they said, man, let's open that right up. Let's, let's, you know, use that for storage too. So nothing's really wasted. Now this is a funny triangular shaped cabinet, but what I think this is perfect for is like body washes, toiletries, things like that. And it does go all the way to the floor. You might notice the doors are dancing a little bit. One of our quality control checking guys is actually up on the roof right now. So that's, uh, you know, he's walking around making sure that all the joists and everything are, are solid and, and uh, you know, well constructed as they should be. Now over here, you've got uh, a place to uh, mount your TV in the bedroom. And you see that big black sticker. If you go ahead and mount a solar system to this RV, that's where you can mount the charge controller. The wiring's already run for you. That bedroom entry door there is there for fire code, but it does have a deadbolt for privacy. So, you know, you're, no one's just gonna barge in on you when you're in here. And that big window right there, it also opens for airflow so that you can get good views of your site. Now, a really neat thing here, like it's cool that you have these side stands, they have household outlets, you have USBs on that side over there. 
Um, but if you look in the back, there's like a pocket behind it. And what they did here is really cool. There's actually outlets back there as well. So it's basically a little kind of hideaway CPAP stand, and it puts the machine up by your face, which makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? Of course, there's a privacy shade for the front windshield here, but they've also touched up these lights. Like, it's cool that they light right up, but it's just this little touch sensor, and you've got three stages now. So you've got, like, night light, reading light, and viewing light. And it's kind of cool how they put that all together. You might have noticed the pillow in the living room, you know, enjoy the journey. And here you've got your journey, apparently established in 2020. So evidently at the time of this filming, uh, that pillow is from the future, like the Terminators. So I'm actually a little suspect about that pillow right now being a, uh, a low key shape-shifting Terminator. But I might just be sleep deprived currently. I'm not sure. Anyway, and over here, <laughs> why not? More storage, right? So that is yet another hanging closet, and I love that because it gives us the benefits of a like a, a storage closet in a slide without the extra weight and cost of a slide out. Plus, it can be taller, which means they actually have room for extra dresser drawers as well. Now there is easy lift storage below the master bed as well, but what you can see here is it's completely separated from the front pass-through area, which is quite large. Now there's, uh, on the, over here on the driver's side, I don't normally start over here, but uh, there's actually still the RV delivery driver's truck hooked up to it. I'm just kind of working ahead of the curve right now. You see the battery disconnect and there is easy reach uh, lighting on both sides of the pass-through. Now you can see how those are magnet uh, held back and slam latched for easy operation. Very handy if you've got one hand full. Like uh, when you're, you know when you're closing up camp, you got that power cord wrapped up in your hand. It's kind of, you don't really have two hands free to lump stuff up into there, you know, now you do. Neat thing here, a lot of ultralights will have 20 pound tanks, uh, propane tanks that is, but uh, White Hawks have always been really good about having 30s for a lot of years now. And you can see on a drizzly day like this, the nose accent lights kind of punch through the mix. Does this thing look cool? I, when they went to this exterior styling on these White Hawks, it just immediately looked like a spaceship to me. I absolutely love how these things look. Now, all the windows uh, are tinted heavily, and Jayco's very good about that. I, I don't believe they make a trailer without window tint. It helps keep the, uh, the sunshine out, but you've also got frameless windows on the sides here with slide side windows on either side of that slide. Our hookup stuff, like our uh, outside showers, are located right here above the uh, sewer outlet. And these have what they call their uh, climate shield package, which begins with an enclosed heated underbelly, but that's only where it begins. Remember, they already had that radiant barrier in the slide floor. They had extra layers of protection to the floor and the roof to really help extend the season of this thing. The back side of the camper here is also a really easy way to get to tell the double vaulted uh, roof nature of this thing because it really exaggerates on the exterior. Also back here, you've got J-Smart lighting. That is those extra clearance lights up top on the sides. And then like if you flip on your left blinker, those upper left clearance lights and then all the lights on the left side of the trailer will blink along with the tail lights to let other drivers know what you're doing. And that is something that you just don't really find in the RV industry outside of Jayco. It's a, uh, it, it's a thing that costs extra money to do. It's the reason that this White Hawk might cost a dollar more than something else. There's a bunch of reasons for it. That's, you know, like the fact that they're using plywood roof and floor decking, things like that. That stuff adds a little bit of money to the RV, but it also adds longevity and quality and peace of mind. Um, and the reverse travel lights, you know, there's safety items here. Handy little pet leash latch down there below the ladder, and you can see that we have outfitted this one with the uh, upgraded stable steps for easy come and go. Now, the uh, awning here covers both entry doors, which is a really nice touch, and of course, there is lighting below it. It is easy tilt, and I want to make a, uh, I'm kind of making my outside tour a little brief so that the outside kitchen isn't really exposed to the elements. I don't know what it is. The last Three times I've had to record a 26RK. The weather's been garbage, so pardon me here as I'm moving through. Um, let me get this pulled back out so again it's not getting rained on. But what they did, the way that they've revised their outside kitchen on this is stellar. It looks like it already got rained on a little before I got to it and closed it up earlier. Anyway, we'll get this all dried out. Capital Grill outside. And you've got galvanized rolled steel countertops in here. So the countertops, thankfully, not like everything that's wet is metal. No big deal. You can just dry it out. Nothing here would sponge and swell like a, uh, a more common outside kitchen would. Little neat touches though. You got the little spice rack up here. 
there's a little bumper so that the refrigerator door doesn't smash against that sharp point. That is some detail-oriented action right there. Um, there are, uh, uh, or rather, there is a paper towel holder up here just above the sink area, and there are outlets back there in that corner. Light switches just behind the sink right there where they're easy to reach, but they're out of the way. And you've got the pull-out sink cutting board station, which also doubles as, basically, a drawer. So you have room for your tongs and stuff out here. You can swap this sink fixture out for a full outside kind of sprayer faucet to be able to hose the kids down or just spray your wife and then hide yourself inside and, and deadbolt the door until she calms down and doesn't want to kill you, which is probably going to take a couple days. And the longer you keep her locked out, the worse that's going to get, by the way. I'm not speaking from experience. I'm just saying. And finally, even on a cold, rainy day, we're still going to get you up here on the roof because there's things that you deserve to know and customer service goes beyond whether the weather is pleasant or nice. That's the kind of stuff we're willing to do for you here at Aylitz. Remember I always said we had a guy up here quality controlling and checking everything earlier before it was off the driver's truck. You can see his footprints. That wasn't something I was just making up here. So one of the things I mentioned earlier, it's very uncommon quality. This says plywood roof decking. That is very uncommon actually. Almost no other manufacturers do that. Jayco does it pretty much across the board. Anything eight foot wide or wider is going to be a plywood roof deck in their towable division. It holds more weight, uh, basically. You can have a perfectly walkable roof without it. You can have a snow load roof without it. It's just that Jayco's roofs are rated for more. And logically, if they're rated for more weight, they're rated to handle more stress, which means, theoretically, a better built, longer lasting camper. Now the black plug there is also standard roof solar prep. You saw the solar prep sticker inside. So any of these blank spaces right here, you can uh, you know go crazy adding some solar panels and get yourself off-grid ready, or at least extended off-grid capable, uh, maybe not necessarily permanent off-grid cable, which takes some serious battery power and a whole bunch of panels. Now, as you can see, we have a sea of opportunities here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And just like this White Hawk, every single one of them has a different set of qualities that make it really fun, really cool, interesting. They're all the best in a different way. And taking the time, even on a rainy day, to climb up on the roof to show you, that's what we do here at Halet RV. So whether it's hitching pieces, parts, trades finance, truck and trailer package, deals, RV delivery, and everything in between, new, used, and otherwise. I don't know what otherwise would be, but if it exists, we got it. Take care. Stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.